So what I'm going to go through tonight is I'm going to go through in the presentation creating a book how we're using the CreateSpace template, laying out text and illustrations, so using an interior template, because so we need the book cover, we need the interior to put the book together, to so on, and so on. Making a dummy book for the layout purposes, this is for children's feature book. Uh, we're going to open a, a CreateSpace account. I'm going to show you some basic steps on how to open a CreateSpace account. Uh, which ISBN to buy? The ISBN was really booked. Proofing your book before publication. Setting up an Amazon book sales page. And pricing your feature book for sales on Amazon. How does that sound? Gonna, all right, so the first thing we're going to need is to actually publish your book is we're going to need a book cover template and we're going to need the interior of the book. So to get the template, because we are uploading our information to create space for them to turn that into a book. So we need to get the exact size of our book to upload so they can cut that book, cut their sheets of paper to make a book. So the first thing I recommend doing is going to Google search bar and typing in create space book cover template. And it should be the first result that you select will take you to a page that looks like this. Right here on the bottom, configure your template. This is a drop down option. I select with mine is full color with bleed. I chose bleed because on my book, my illustrations go all the way to the edge of the page. So I need it to bleed over. You can select just full color. If you have a picture book that has the images you know, all over the book, but it doesn't go to the edge, you can be okay with just full color. Huh? Mine will bleed over, so no, I, I need to include the bleed because when, they cut, when the machine prints out my book on those big pieces of paper, okay. it starts chopping it. I don't want that white edge. I don't want to have that white little nasty edge on, on the book. So that wouldn't happen if I didn't have the bleed over. Okay. And then what you need to select is the size of your book, your trim size. This is eight and a half by eight and a half. Okay. And then the last is, it needs to know how many pages. Because we're making the book cover here. It needs to know how many number of pages. Uh, this is actually 60, but a basic children's picture book is 32 pages. So you type in the number there, you just type that in. So if it's 48 or 60, just type that in. And then you click on. <coughs> build the template and you'll end up with something like this. So now what we have to do, now if you're looking at this and go, no, I can't have a, uh, a book cover, don't worry. Further on through the presentation, there's other ways of getting a book cover, all right? But for those of us who are technically savvy and we want to be able to create our own book cover, I'll just run through that. This is the template. So you need to put your, uh, have your illustrator make a front cover and that needs to fit over here and it needs to go over the dotted line around the edge for the size. So make sure when you're creating your, your book cover, the size is big enough that it just goes over that dotted line. If when you bring your illustration onto the template and it doesn't go over the dotted line, you can end up with that white line down the side when they print the book. The middle bit, now with 32 pages, mm, you kind of get away if you don't want to use a, 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 a trim, the book spine. Um, but they are allocating 0.13 inches for a spine for this bit here. See, I didn't do them on this one. But they are like six, quite thin. This is actually 60 pages, you can see it's still quite thin. And then of course you want to make sure you do a back cover and also have a description for your book. And also make sure you leave a white space because that's where they're going to print the, uh, the ISBN number, the barcode for your book. So you need to lay that out. That would be a JPEG. As you created the image, it's going to be JPEG. You can only upload PDFs to create space. So we're going to need to convert that to a PDF. The way to do that is to open up Word. We all like to type our stories in Word document. The way to do that is in Word, we need to create a sheet of paper so we can put our book cover onto it to convert it into a PDF. Everybody with me understanding that? So what you do to actually make the size correct is you go to, into Word. If you click above that little the ruler, the measure there, you double click on that, a box opens. And you can set the width of the page. So we need eight and a half plus eight and a half plus 0.13 inches. 
that sheet of paper needs to be that size. I've got just a little bit over, it's like 17.5, but you need to make sure the page is that much. And of course the height is 8.5. Then you put your image, your book cover, on top of that Word doc sheet, like that. So for my book cover, it needs to be eight and a half plus eight and a half plus point thirteen. For the oh, point that was it. Point thirteen. Yeah. yeah. You just got to do a little calculation on that one, uh, and let's say just make sure it goes on the edge. So the easiest way I found to be able to do that was to create the page, click on uh, image, uh, click on the insert, get my image, put it on top of that white piece of paper, click on position, so I position it center top and then click on wrap text and put on tight. Then I was able to move this piece of paper around so it fit correctly right on that white sheet of paper that I created. And then what you do then is you need to save it as a PDF so we can upload that to create space. So So what you do then is just go to file, click on export, click on create PDF and then save that on a folder on your desktop or somewhere where you need and easily access that. All right, so that's the book cover done. We got that done. Right, now we need the interior pieces of paper. We need this inside. Now when you upload a book to create space, you don't want to just open a Word doc and have like, just a regular sheet of paper being eight and a half by 11 to start putting all your content on because when you upload a create space and it starts chopping your book, <laughs> you can have pictures all over the place. It's going to look really messy. So we start with the basic template, the size of the book we want to create. This is up to you. I mean, I, my, my piece monster was 9 by 6, because the figures were starting tall. This, I made it to an 8.5 by 8.5. I think it kind of fits better for the you know, images, things like that. It seems to fit nicely. So we go back to Google, type in Create Space Book Cover Template, and this time we're going to select the third option for the interior of our book. We're going to start with the interior. It will open a page that looks like this. On the left, you have the templates for a novel. On the right, you have the templates for a page book. Go down the side until you find the size of your book that you can be creating. Come across and then click on the download the template. The top one is actually the novel. And so that's the wonderful thing about Create Space. It gives you everything you need. So the first page, what we're going to use, we, we, I'm gonna, we're going to use the first kind of three pages from a novel because we need the first page with our book title and who the author is and illustrator. The second page is the copyright information. And then the third page is if you want to do a dedication to someone in your book. So we're going to use those first. But when you download the picture book template, all you end up with is this. That's all it gives you. And as you know with Word, when you start writing content on a page, it will open up another page and another page. And that's how it comes. It already has a little bit of text on here. Just remove that and start adding your own text. And as I said, I just copied the first three pages of what was in the novel and just added it at the beginning. So, there we go. Now, for a children's picture book, the average is 32 pages. So the way it starts is the first one was going to be, as you say, the, the top one here, the book cover with information. The second and the third would be the copyright information and the dedication. And then page number four, is going to be where you start writing your story on that and illustrations all right so that's what you need to wear so what i do highly recommend i'm sure many of you already do that was is create a book dummy first lay everything out what you need is just eight sheets of regular computer paper folded in half staple it and then just lay out your book how you want your book to be before you even start putting the information onto the word document that way, with your dummy, you can just start putting it correctly, moving it over. As opposed to, because I found before, sometimes with Word, I can start adding information, if I need to change a picture around it, everything just kind of shoots all over the place, and I end up with quite a mess. If I already have a dummy layout, I can just copy everything over and keep everything straight and organized and nothing moves around. So, um, highly recommend just doing a little book, book dummy. This one, with just some illustrations. I just literally do uh, stick figures figures with a little script. You don't need to be artistic if you're not, but just get the basic foundation of your 32-page book layout, how you want it to be, and do that. 
All right, so make sure within your picture book you do have the copyright information. You have that page, that's the copyright information. And you have that space for the ISBN number because that's crucial. You make sure you put the ISBN number inside your picture book as well. All right, so that was page number three. So this is inside Word, and this is how I recommend when I do the layout of my children's picture book. You need to make it look as professional as possible. I mean, you, you are self-publishing, but it doesn't mean to say your book has to look like it's been self-published. If you just spend a little time laying it out and just taking a few extra steps, so you can look very professional. So what I recommend is when you're in Word and you've got that first page open and you're down to three now, you're starting to write your story, is I use a grid. So when I actually start, because it was important for me to make sure when people turn the page, the, the line, the first line starts in the same position. You don't want it jumping all over the place. If you've got illustrations, of some here, some there, it uh, doesn't really matter. But so just by using the grid, it helps position everything. Uh, that way, you know, you want it to start always, when you turn the page, it's always the same distance. You don't want your writing to somebody here, somebody in there. You want it to always start the same distance from the edge and in the, on the same position line. That way it looks a lot classier and looks more professionally done. So I just recommend you just use with Word, just click on the little sections where it says grid. Just check that and you'll have a grid. And then I usually, it's just a little time consuming, but I just usually count, count the squares down and crack the squares above. Or on my computer, I'll put a little sticky note, a little line, and that way when I get each page, it's you know, it positions the right way. But that's something I do to make my books look a little bit more professional. So when you finish with all your text, you should end up looking something like this. Where you have your first page with your title, well image, and the author and illustrator. The second page will be the copyright page, the third page your dedication, and then you start with your chapters. So I went text, picture, text, picture, text, picture, and that's how I laid my down. But you don't have to do it that way, you can put it wherever you want, but I just, just laid it out this way, it seems to do your sweat very nicely. So, never mind. Oh. So now we've got we've got our book cover done, we've got our interior done. Now we need to upload it to create space so we can sell our book on Amazon. Alright? So go to createspace.com and uh, you can sign up for an account. Let's get you in there. If you already have one, just log in. Okay. We're gonna just need some basic information first of all. They're gonna need your account information. So just go ahead and fill in what, as much information as you possibly can, email address, contact phone number, everything else like that. The second they're going to do is you need the royalty payment information. Amazon needs to, well, creates, needs to know exactly where they're going to send all that money to make make the sales of your book. <laughs> and uh, so just go ahead and fill that information in. And uh, I actually have direct deposit, but you can have a check and send you a check if you so like and say so just put in your writing number information. Um, put in the basic information as well as royalty payment to who he's going to go to, and make sure you also fill in the tax information. Where well do you find this page? Google? Uh, CreateSpace.com. CreateSpace.com. Okay, then we need to fill in the billing profile. Uh, uh, CreateSpace needs to know who is going to bill for when you order your proof of your book, and I go over, or, what, or if you want to order several copies of your book to sell at events. So you fill that information in. Once again, it's very straightforward. Once you've already created an account, it will actually save the information at the top. If you ever need to make any changes, just add the changes at the bottom. All the pages you go to, always make sure you save every page that you go to. Just save them and do things like that. And then the final one is the shipping profile. You know, create space needs to know where it's going to ship that proof to you. And also, if you ever want to order several books for you to sell at events, it needs to know where to ship to. So once again, just fill in the basic information same profile and continue. So our goal is now we've got our book, we want to have it on Amazon so our page looks like this. So we're going to go through that process. So within Create Space, what we first need to do is our title. We've got the book, it's up, we need to add the title, the title information. So let's click on that. And so it's pretty straightforward. It's just when you see the green checks, you know that's done. If there's a little red with a little white line, that needs to be filled out. So the, following that basic information, we're going to do a paperback. I said there are several options that you can sell on Amazon, but today we're going to do a paperback. 
What I highly recommend in step number three is a step-by-step -step process with help along the way. And I say, just follow that. That way it goes page by page by page and you don't miss anything out. So let's go ahead with that. We're going to fill in the title of our book. This is just for demonstration purposes only. That's why I call it nothing and caught nothing. <laughs> it's just purely for demonstration purposes, so I have something for you. Fill in the title of your book, subtitle, primary author's name. This little button here, the add, you can add illustrators, co-authors, just keep adding whoever you need to be, who needs to be recognized in your book. Just keep adding them right there. It's a series title, language, and publication date. Sometimes the publication date won't work. It's usually through publishing house, it there. Now, once you've created this information on this page, this page locks can't get in and change it. So before you press that save and continue, check your spelling, check your information. Now if you suddenly realize it's like, oh I spelled the word wrong, because I say sometimes you can see something and it, you know, look back at it and go, why didn't I see that? You can call Create Space. Tell them you need to change your title of the page, they will change it for you right there over the phone. And then they'll save it to your end too. You can't go in there yourself and make any changes. It's already locked. Call them up and they will actually make the changes for you. So that's a nice thing there. And Create Space is wonderful. If you have any questions with Create Space, you just contact support. You can tell them to call you. They call you like that. It's real fast. So they're a great platform to use. So what we need now is an ISBN number. We need the international standard book number. It's the 30-digit number that uses as a, is used as a unique identifier for every single book. Every title has an ISBN number. So that's what we need to get next for our book. There are several options for an ISBN number. If you're on a tight budget and you want to publish just a, a basic book and things like that, then CreateSpace does offer a free ISBN number. The only drawback with the free one is you are now committing that book to just Amazon and CreateSpace. You can't sell that book on several other platforms. If a publishing house came to you and said, we want to buy the rights of your book, you can't sell them. Because you use the free one, you are now committing yourself. That book belongs to Amazon, to CreateSpace. I highly recommend it. I actually use the Custom Universe. It's $99. Uh, that way I can, if I can do whatever I want with my book, I can create it, if, it, if somebody comes to me and wants to sell, uh, you know, publishing houses are going to buy the rights to your book, I can sell that book, it's my book, I own it. So through the custom, uh, there's the option, I go course, then you can provide your own ISBN number. Uh, once you have the ISBN number, then make sure you take that number and put it right on the interior of your book, on that third page. Just copy and paste it right in there so it's already in there so that book so people can look through that. So just one thing that's one thing to remember. Got my ISBN up, oh, now I need to go to my Word doc where my book's all laid out and add that ISBN. Don't worry about the book cover, say create space prints that for you, just put it on the interior of your book. And uh, if you want to buy your own ISBN number, then you can go to Boca. Actually, if you buy through uh, create space, they also buy from Boca. It's just you get a little bit of a discount if you get through them. You just go to myidentifier.com forward slash get your own ISBN now. Uh, of course, if you buy one, it's $125. It's best to, of course, buy 10 at the better price, at $295 uh, dollars to buy 10 ISBN numbers. So that's kind of the cheaper out. Buying bulk, a little cheaper. But that way you have your own ISBN number, and then you just use that ISBN number, and then you put that into a create space. So, all right, so now uh, we are going to upload our interior to create space so we can make our book. But create space needs to know what is the size of our book. But we download the template from Google. Now we need to inform create space. I'm uploading this template to you for you to print this size. So within step six is select the upload. It defaults to six by nine inches. Just click on choose, uh, choose a different size and a box opens up and then just click on the size of your book. And then what you do is for your interior, just click on the section below, click browse, open up the folder where you've got your interior book saved, and then upload that and bring that in to create space, and then save, all right? So that's your interior uploaded. 
So we've got the interior. Now we need the book cover. We're going to bring the book cover up. So we brought our interior to create space. It's got that. Now we need to bring the book cover up. We need to like create space. Now, do we want our book cover? Do we want it matte? Or do we want it glossy one? I chose glossy. Uh, now, earlier on when I was, I was actually creating a book cover, if it's if you, something you don't want to do, you have options as regards a book cover. Uh, you can build your own cover right within Create Space. They do actually offer some templates, which basically like that. They have several pages where they offer various designs, where you already see some existing text, just replace that with your own text. This is a free service through Create Space. I mean, they have a few designs. A lot of them are for the novels as opposed to a children's book. They have a lot more for novels. Uh, but there are some pages where you might get some ideas where you want to use a free template. Otherwise, Create Space does offer a professional cover designing service at a starting price of $399 on that one. Yes. <laughs> now, also, uh, one website I didn't mention, I mentioned to a few of you earlier, if you need a book cover designing, there is a website called Fiber, F I B E R R dot com. Excellent. Anything, anybody does all kinds of things. They make book covers, they'll do jingles, they'll create illustrations. That's where I found my illustrator. All kinds of services. You can ask me there, please design me a book cover. It needs to be, just know the size, you know, eight and a half. Make sure, you know, they do the whole book cover. So you want the front, the back, and the spine, so we make sure you know the dimensions of what you need to upload to create space. And if you got, you're going to put your own description on, have them write the description and leave that little white space for them to print the ISBN. So there are several options for uh, doing that. But as you say, if you go through create space, do with $99. We'll do a nice job, but that's if you're, you know, on a budget, budget, that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of money. So there is that option there. Through the design center, say it's $3.99, you just contact them, give them a phone number, a little description, and they'll call you, and then you discuss the whole design of how you want your book cover to look. All right. Uh, I actually, say, created my own book cover, so what you do within here is you just go browse, click on the book cover that I saved as a PDF, and I bring that into Create Space. So now I've uploaded my interior of my book, and I've uploaded my book cover. I've got that now. So what happens next? is we're going to do step A, we're going to complete the setup for submitting it. So just make sure on this last page that everything is correct, that the title of your book is correct, the information is correct, the author's name, the ISBN number is correct. Make sure you upload the size of your book is correct, that you want it color. So just go through this page, double checking everything is correct, that you uploaded the correct interior. I'm sure you, many of you like me, when, you, when you're creating your book in, in Word, you, you're doing several versions, you're having, especially when you have it edited, you're updating it all the time, and all these edits, and you keep time, trying to give it a different title so you know which is the latest, uh, latest edition. Just make sure before you upload it, you have late, uploaded your latest edition of your book. It is the newer one. And then, of course, um, make sure you, uh, you've chosen the book cover that you, so you want on that one. And then just submit files for review. It takes probably about 24 hours, sometimes it takes less than that for a create space to review everything. And as I say, the lady said, everything looks okay. Yeah. yeah. And they just they go through, they make sure everything looks technically okay. So I'm not sure whether it's a machine that, that checks everything. I'm not sure if it's the person, but they just make sure everything's okay. If there is an issue, they will let you know. Uh, once they've reviewed it, you'll get an email, and of course it'll say something like, Congratulations, your interior cover files for the Waffle Hoppers meet our technical requirements for printing. The next step is the publishing process is to proof your book. So if you upload it now, we put, so we click on the link below. So now, right within Create Space, I highly recommend viewing a digital proof. Because you'll say, with Word, you upload things, sometimes things can move around. You want to make sure before you put it for sale on Amazon that it looks professional, that it looks you know, nice and laid out. You don't want to put something there, it all goofed up or some errors. And then you know, somebody buys your book and then you get this nasty, you know, this bad review. That just, you know, you don't want that to happen at all. Yeah. So click on the, uh, the actual uh, preview, which will open up a PDF. You don't get to see the cover, but you do get to see the interior. So just go through page by page, just checking 
new line starts at the same position. There's no white lines or anything around the edges of the picture. You go through here. Now, the nice thing is, if you're going through this, you notice some errors, just go back to your document you uploaded, make the changes all together at once. So go through all the pages, make note of all the changes, save that Word doc with all your manuscript again, and then upload it again to create space. <coughs> You can keep doing that several times if need be. If something keeps not right, you just keep uploading it. And then, of course, it's going to take 20, about 24 hours to prove everything again. But I highly recommend previewing a PDF just to make sure everything looks right. And then, of course, if everything looks right, you do actually want to have a physical proof of your book. As you say, it's always best to have a proof. Get a copy of the book in your hand so you can go through everything. So say you don't see the book cover, you want to make sure that the front and the back cover, there's no bleed over or anything <coughs> else like that. You want to make sure that the pictures are not too high when they've cropped the book. So I highly recommend ordering an actual proof of your book so you can have it in your sense, you can go through it. And then if you do notice any errors, just go back to your original interior, make the changes and upload it again, wait 24 hours, proof it, and then you're all set. All right. So once everything's proved, you've got your book, uh, it takes probably about five to seven days for them to send you, for them to print the book and send you out of proof. So it's not a very long process. I know it seems like it's like the, the longest week. I was fine waiting for my <laughs> book to arrive in the mail. But uh, it takes about five to seven days to actually get the book. Once you've got the book, everything looks wonderful. Then click on the approve button. So now the book's all ready to go. So now we need that platform to s on Amazon to sell the book from. We've got our book there, now we need to be able to sell it on Amazon. So what we're going to do is write your book description. So within the stages, you come to that, we, what we're aiming for is this, at the top, uh, top right, that's what we want. Fill in the information within the book description. The description you put here is what's going to show up on your Amazon sales page. So try and get something captivating, written, don't just go blah, blah, blah. Try and you know, make it really desirable for people that have got to buy the book. If they don't buy the book, you know, they're missing out. So make this desirable. It's your sales letter, it's your copy page. So, you know, if you're not good at copywriting, you know, maybe hire somebody or hire a you know, relative or friend, but it just needs to be a good sales uh, description, a good copy editing. Fill that information in. Make sure you put it under a category. This I find, I mean, to some of you maybe it's a little easy, but I find it's a little tricky because it doesn't just say children's picture books category, no. Uh, you have to go through, when you click on the choose, a little box open and you select from each little panel. So you, you've got to kind of, you've got to really know your book and where it's going to fit within the whole Amazon sales and where people are going to find your book that's uh, under the correct, you know, genre and, and the game. You know, you don't want a uh, thriller under, uh, you know, a non-fiction book. So just make sure you get that information correct. Select it and then it will highlight it there. Enter what reading level your book's at. Fill in a lot of bio. Uh, if there's a space to put some information, put some information. Because uh, Amazon is a search engine, just like Google. It's a search engine. So the more you can put in there, the keywords, optimization for, for search results, you know, do that. Put as much as you can in that one. Uh, book language English, United States, is printed right in. I think our local place is Anaheim where they print the books. And then, of course, uh, Amazon lets you put in five keywords to help optimize the uh, search engines for search results for your book. So for the categories you want, like grown up, um, what I recommend actually is looking at other books um, you know, similar to yours and see what kind of keywords they've used. You can know, use the same kind of keywords there. And then click save and continue, once you've got all that. Now we need to come with a price. We've got the book out, we've got, we create the page, we need to figure out how much our book is going to sell for. On this page, uh, Amazon actually will tell you, I should say, Create Space will tell you what they recommend as a sales price on this. Uh, I put $12.95. This you can change. You can test your market for sales of book. You start a little too low and the sales are going like crazy, you're not making a profit, then of course go higher. If you find, you, you know, if you create a little too high and you're not really getting the sales, then just lower the price a little bit. But this is adjustable, which is a nice thing. Uh, every time you put a price and then you press calculate, it shows you what the royalties are. Now just remember here, uh, when you put on Create Space, uh, you're also going to be on the Barnes & Noble online website. That's a nice thing through the channels. I'll show you in a moment why. And uh, they have a couple of other online locations where they sell your book. Now if, they, if your book sold on the Barnes & Noble's website, Barnes & Noble takes their percentage. 
Amazon takes that percentage and you end up with that rest. So just, you know, you've got to figure out how much you want for your book and uh, just, um, you know, set your pricing accordingly to how much profit you want to make for each sale of your book. All right, and then once you've got that sorted out, so it varies for Amazon Europe and then of course for your, for your e-store, which is the Kindle, which this will automatically go to Kindle. Um, you know, you get a bit more money as regards the actual uh, royalties for your book. And as I say, this is the final step. Select distribution channels and say this is what you click. These are all just like clickable, you just highlight them. Uh, it's going to be that right there. You have your Amazon page, your sales page with your price and your description. It's led with that. It just takes maybe a couple of days for it to actually come live so people can start finding your book and tell people to go find your book. But the nice thing is, uh, it takes probably a couple of weeks, but it actually will also show up on Barnes and Noble's online store as well. So you're not only limited to Amazon, it actually will sell on the website as well for the sale of your book. Alrighty, so I think that's all the steps as regards publishing a picture book. So my name is Fabi Bolton. If you have any questions, just contact me at support at fabibolton.com. I have a website, fabibolton.com, where I actually um, post a lot of information about writing fiction and fiction books. A lot of like show, don't tell information. <laughs> and uh, of course, about the publication of picture books. Now, does anybody have any questions? Barcode. You have to buy that as well? Or? No. No, when they, when they say they, they tell you to leave that white space and they print it right on for you. When you upload your color and they're printing it to send it out to your uh, create space, will print that on for you. You just leave that white space. Okay, they, they charge you for the barcode. Right? No, it comes with the ISP. It comes with the ISP. Create yeah. space will give you one, yeah. but it limit, limits your sales option. Yeah. So you can buy them separately. Yeah. Um, well, that. Yeah. That's that's all. That's my only comment is if you get it, the ISBN controls the sales of that book as long as it exists. So if you own it and it's your ISBN, they have to pay through you or anybody else. So a very basic question: Is this entirely free? You can actually well, um, you could do you could print a book for free. Yeah, if you didn't want to pay for illustrations or anything else, and you wanted to create your book cover yourself and not pay for anything else and get the free ISBN, uh, it is. It, I mean, it, it, apart from the cost that you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's, no, it's free. It's free. Okay. Everything is free. Because say, Amazon wants you to sell books. It does everything it possibly can to help you make sales of that book because that's how it makes money. That's why there's about a million books go on Amazon for sale every single year. They help, they help you to create books. They make it as easy as possible for people to write books because that's how they make the money from the sale of all these books. So you can do it actually on a zero Budget. Thomas, because it's a POD, pay on demand. Yeah. So, so they don't so, uh, if you already have an Amazon account, you can use that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's actually, when, once you upload it, you book everything's on there. Um, it's actually, and you have the Amazon page. It's just every time they, every time someone clicks on to, it's actually not, clicks on, you know, buy the book, create space then will print out that book. <coughs> and then they send it out. You don't need to do anything at all. They do everything for you. I mean, you can order copies of your book yourself at the cost price. If you want to go to events and sell them at events. Uh, but with, when people buy it through Amazon and click that buy button, Trace Space prints out that book and then ships it off. You don't need to do anything. So it's literally, you can, you can do it on a zero budget. And I say, best way to do it is just write some novels. <laughs> but you don't need illustrations or fancy things. And use the free uh, you know, template for a novel. Tom, like it's when you order the book and it comes to you, you have to pay shipping on it also. So whatever the book yeah. costs, and yeah. then the shipping is, is the only charge. Yeah, it actually costs, for, for this book, for the cost of this, it's $5.05. And then it was three ninety nine for the shipping. We need to receive this for book. one copy. For one copy. But if you get twenty, it's a lot less. Yeah, yeah. it's fine with anything. If you buy in bulk, yeah, they get a better deal. But your, better ship, deal but your shipping that. goes up. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cheaper. Book is cheaper. Right. Much cheaper. Yeah. Right. Much, yeah. Much, yeah. yeah. Much, yeah. Absolutely. That's the thing. <laughs> Quick question: Did you have you noticed a difference in price between the black and white interior cost oh, versus right. the full color? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, did you know what came up? Uh, this actually, this book, I actually traded into a, a color book. It was only two dollars for it just to be a black and white color book. 
as so opposed to 505 for full okay. yeah. So it's a few dollars, we should say that the milk quantity is Do you know if you can offer it both ways, one black and white version and one color version? Yeah, that's what I did. I just, well, I just changed the title of the Waffle well, Harvest Cures Maple Coloring Book. Oh. And then just like that, I literally just went, I did it myself actually, I forgot to bring a copy in tonight, but all I did is went into paint.net, that program that many of us have on a computer, go paint.net, and I just blacked out, uh, just went into the, um, the change there, under, what's it called? Uh -huh. uh, just, just, image black and white. just in the like images, image and black and white. Yeah. You should be able to do the same thing to make a black and white when you're, when you're publishing it, yeah. I know yeah, you can print it in black and white. Yeah, you can yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can print it. I just say black and white. You print it. Just do black and white. But uh, with it only costing two dollars for the for the coloring book, that's my marketing tool now for me to be able to help you out. I mean, two dollars for a little marketing aid is, is not bad to be able to help out. Right now. Do you, Do you have a uh, a storefront on Create Space like you do on Lulu.com? It's, it's Amazon. It's my Amazon so page. So you have a store that's, on the Amazon that's why I wouldn't. It's important to get the description correct because that's your sales copy. The reason I'm asking is I go through Lulu. I've never gone through Create Space, but I'm interested in checking out both. But I have so much stuff on Lulu that what I would like to do is if you have the storefront, you can add your bio. Therefore, on the bio, you can put that you have information on yes. Lulu.com. So, I mean, yeah. I know you can do it through Google. Uh, yeah, okay. so that's a good, actually a good point. Right. Uh, make sure you create your office central, go to Office Central, create your office page. And put as much as you can. It's great because if you have a website, you can actually put your blog posts in there, you can put videos in there. Uh, it becomes a very active uh, page with all your information so people can see videos, they can read about you, they can see what you're blogging about. And that's all through Office Central. So, when you actually, I'll find the page now, probably can't find it. When you actually look at, um, you know, your, your your book on sale for on Amazon, it, you, your your actual author's name will be highlighted, hyperlinked. If you click on that, that will actually take you to your author central page where people can see all the books that you've written and learn more about you. In that one. Uh, a couple comments. One is uh, there may be a slight difference with the Mac versus the laptop on the screen. On the one where you pick. You have those venues where the book can be made available, libraries, etc. Yeah. That can affect your royalty. Yes. And so you, you want to go back and make sure that the price you set isn't going to end up being a negative <laughs> yeah. by the time they all take their chunk. Yeah. Um, because that can happen. And then also they make the book available if you want as an ebook. Correct. And they will suggest prices. <laughs> To maximize sales, for instance, <laughs> they have found there are certain sweet areas where if your price is in a certain range, yes. you actually get a better percentage. I think it's seventy percent royalty. Correct. Where if you're below a certain amount yeah. or above a certain amount, your royalty drops to thirty-five percent. Yeah. Which is bizarre, but that's just what yeah, I believe it's But it is easy to yeah. use, and they explain everything. Correct. It's between two ninety-nine and nine ninety-nine. Yeah, you get seventy percent. Yeah, two ninety-nine. You get seventy percent. Right. Two ninety-eight. You get yeah. Thirty-five percent. Yeah. Or if it's ten dollars or more, you get yeah. thirty-five percent. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. As you say, you know, you, you do get you know with Barnes and Noble. That's the thing. It's like as you mentioned. Yeah, if it's sold, my book sells on Barnes and Nobles, then Barnes and Nobles will take its percentage. That is agreed with Amazon. Uh, Amazon takes their percentage because you know it's sold for them, and then you end up with what's left of the royalties. So that's why it's like don't price your book too low. Because um, you say you won't be making any any money. If you're just starting out, want to just get your name out there, then go ahead just to get some sales going. But if you know in this to make some money, then price your book accordingly so you make some profit uh, for the sales of your book. But it's nice actually, they've just apparently recently, I think along with Barnes and Nobles, before they didn't well, with Barnes and Nobles, but now they've extended that. And they say once your book's here and it's approved, it's published and it's live, you just actually within the within the platform you can click on a button and they will actually automatically change convert your paperback book into a Kindle. You don't need to do anything. And now becomes a Kindle. I, I did the wrong way around when I first uploaded Peace Monster. I, I made a Kindle of it and then I did paperback. Now now going through the experience and realized I don't need to do that because it automatically because it's got it's already laid out there, it's already made into PDF. It's already Kindle. So you just click on yes, convert to a Kindle edition. And 
now you're able to sell it as a paperback and a cable. So that's nice. Keep in mind also, even though it's on the Barnes and Noble website, that does not mean it will be in the Barnes and Noble store. Correct, yes. And if you do a book signing at Barnes and yes. Noble, because it is print on demand, Barnes and Noble usually will not provide any books. You provide the books at the book signing, they will then order and replace them in your inventory. So you provide the inventory for the book signing, and then they will replace them based on how many are sold. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I was amazed. Lately, I oh, I, I knew it was on Barnes and Noble and a couple others. But yeah. Just lately, I started googling my book. You know, but I mean, theoretically, it could be in Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> store yeah. there yeah. that you could get the book on. And sometimes yeah. a really strange. Yeah. I, I clicked on that one of these options for international, yeah. and they gave me what the royalty would be in something like 30 countries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the strange thing is why because it's there, you know, Washington sells my book. And I did the same thing. I just, you know, Google my book, put it in quotations. That way, now it's on search. I saw my book for sale on Amazon, uh, on eBay. Oh yeah. It's like so how the I heck did it end up on eBay? <laughs> it sold, so obviously somebody bought my book. But it's like, well, why was it not show up on my sales within my? How did that they happen? They are nobody bought but it. But what happens then is these these booksellers get the book from the distributor. Yeah. This happened with my first book, yeah. from Ingram. Yeah. If the book doesn't sell, they return it, yeah. and it gets subtracted from your royalties as a return book. Yeah. Even though, in the case of my first publisher, they never gave me a royalty in the first place <laughs> because the book had sold. But when your book came back, <laughs> they were the they were the the royalty, <laughs> they were good to me. Yeah. I don't use them anymore. Yeah, I mean, some things do go <laughs> on yeah, me, doesn't say, I've noticed with mine, with that, say, with the Pete's Monster has been out for a little bit. You might be able to see here. You can see it used. It's like, when the heck did they use the book? Yeah, that's the oh. Oh. <laughs> I had used and that's, one, yeah. one week after it was published. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. That was my first book because I just put it on there. And it's already within like a year or two. It's so, so it's on used books. So I'm going. I think they're doing that just to be able to discount from the manufacturer of print yeah. the suggested price. Yeah. Okay. And they still end up with a net profit. After they, they the author, but the author makes nothing on these books. That's, that's, that's it. Yeah. The author gets screwed. We, we, we want our book in people's hands, which hopefully that's doing. You know, and that's the thing. But we just need that book in the right hand for that person to write an amazing review to start you know, increasing our sales. So that's, you know, we, we can quabble about things, but that's what we're really looking for is somebody who loves our book and to write that amazing review that just sets that momentum going um, uh, on the sales and things like that. But yeah, I did actually call up, I think it was Amazon, and said, how is it? I've got used books already, and I've just put my book on them. They just, they just said, we saw, we, we have no control over that. Uh, it's nothing. They can't do anything about it. It's just a guest from whoever publishes the book. They somehow get copies through the distribution, and you know things happen. But as long as we get books into people's hands, that's all we care about. Now. Any other questions? Yeah, one other point. Um, all of these companies, regardless of who they are, have a terms of use document on the website. If you want to understand what you're getting into and what you're going to pay, make a copy of the terms of use. Some of them, once it goes to a PDF, it transfers ownership to them. Yeah. It is no longer your piece of work, your cover, your text. It becomes their file and they don't have to pay you a dime. Yeah. There's one out there called Book Baby. If when you send them your copy to print, once they put it into a PDF, the cover, the text, the spine, and the interior are their file, and they don't have to pay you a penny from that point on in perpetuity. So terms of use really tells yeah. you a good deal. Yeah, as you say, so it's just to read the fine print. Yeah. Just so you don't have to book on any kind of platform or upload it to anything. Your know, content is sort of really the, the fine print to find out what you can sell people, what your limitations are on that one. Okay, any other questions? One of the comment create spaces in North Carolina, so don't write the book 
about gender neutral restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I could read this. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.